Hi, I'm Alistair, and I admit I buy quite a lot of cheap electronic goods online, but I also try to reuse and recycle old electronic hardware as well. And in this video, I want to talk about this little display unit which I got recently. And as it says, this used to be part of a cash register. So uh, this was in a shop where it used to display to customers the names of the items they bought and you know the prices at the till. But it was being thrown out. And in fact, this was in a, a pile of scrap that was going to get a landfill. So I thought, well, I can save that and maybe I can make it work and use it as part of a project. Um, so I've got it connected to an Arduino Nano that's down here. And if I just pop that down, I've got the Arduino ID running on my laptop. And if I just uh, type a message into the serial monitor here, uh, so now I'm an Arduino display. And when I click uh, send there, hopefully, you'll see that I'm able to send um, any message I want, any text message via the serial monitor and display it on the output here. Um, or, for example, the Arduino could be monitoring some kind of inputs or sensor values and it'd be using this as a real-time display. So I just think it's kind of a, a quirky, cute unit that provides a different way of some kind of visual output. Um, and in this video, I'm going to tell you more about the display and how I made it work. So this type of display is called a vacuum fluorescent display, or VFD. And the way they're constructed is that you have a vacuum sealed unit that contains plates covered in phosphor. And when you apply an electrical current across those plates, the phosphor fluoresces, and that's what causes this kind of characteristic green glow. And VFDs used to be really commonly used in all kinds of household appliances. So microwave ovens and video recorders. Um, I've actually got another VFD here, which I extracted from an old slot machine. And hopefully if I hold that to the camera, you might even be able to see the individual plates there. So it's a bit like a, a dot matrix display and you can form different letters and numbers from uh, lighting up individual ones of those dots. Uh, the same is actually true on this display, it's just that the dots are a bit smaller, so I wasn't sure if you were able to see them so clearly. Um, now VFDs are a lot less common these days, they've been replaced with newer technology like uh, LEDs and LCDs and OLEDs, um, but you can still see that they're, they're perfectly good displays and they're kind of fun to use. Now, you don't address each of these dots individually. Um, the VFD needs some driver circuitry as well. And what we need to do is to find out how to address that driver to make the characters come on the screen. Now, fortunately, uh, this screen actually has a label with a model number on it. So this is an Epson DMD110. And that means I can look up the data sheet for that and find out what the interface is to that driver circuitry. Now, one of the trickier bits of working with older hardware is that it can be difficult to find any documentation about it. But I have to say, hats off to Epson. Even though this is a discontinued model that's no longer available to buy, they still have it listed on their website. So if you search for the model number here, you can see here's a little picture of my display and we've still got the links to the user manual and the technical documentation below. Uh, so this is going to make my job a lot easier. So um, let's start by looking at the power requirements. You can see that it says uh, the power is somewhere between 11.4 volts and 48 volts. So I'm going to use the, a 12 volt power supply to supply it here. And when we look in the interfaces section, that driver circuitry I was talking about uses RS-232. Now that is a absolutely standard uh, serial interface. If you're old enough to remember using uh, PCs from before USB sockets were commonplace, um, you might be familiar with that. That was the standard serial interface that you used to get in, in PCs in the 1980s and 1990s, for example. Um, but it's still used, and it has some similarities to the serial interface we're used to on an Arduino. So when you do serial.print on an Arduino, for example, it's similar, but not the same. There's a couple of uh, crucial differences we'll look at in a minute. And then we actually look at the, the more detailed technical documents. There's a PDF we can download, and here it lists the uh, pinout of the actual electrical connections. 
So you can see it's an RJ45 connector, so the same as a, an Ethernet connection. And we've got eight pins, and we've got ground, transmit and receive lines, uh, some lines to say when data is ready to be sent or received, and then we've got uh, the power supply and the power ground. Now, we can't wire these directly to an Arduino um, for a couple of reasons. So the first one is this power supply, as we mentioned here, needs to be in the range 11 to 48 volts. So we can't run that from the VCC of an Arduino. We're going to use a separate 12 volt power supply for that. And we'll connect the ground of the power here to the uh, ground. But when it comes to actually transmitting data from the Arduino, there's a couple of changes we need to make as well. So normally in the Arduino serial connection, we have a series of high and low voltages. So high to an Arduino is 5 volts and low is 0 volts. And they correspond to the binary values of 1 and 0. Now RS232 also has binary values of 1 and 0, but confusingly they're the other way round. So the lower voltage represents what's called a mark or the value 1, and the higher voltage is a space or the binary value 0. So they're the other way around from uh, an Arduino if we'd normally use. That's the first change. But the second kind of more significant difference, I guess, is the actual voltage range is different as well. And crucially, the low voltage is a negative voltage. It's actually below ground. So um, common values, it can exceed as much as negative 15 volts for a mark or a one zero and positive 15 volts for a space or a binary zero value. So we're going to need some way of both inverting the Arduino signal output and also kind of stretching it to this voltage range of minus 15 volts to positive 15 volts as well. Um, Arduinos and generally speaking most microprocessors, modern microprocessors, don't like working with negative voltages. Uh, you want your ground to be your zero point. So we're going to use a, a dedicated chip for doing this conversion and we're going to use the MAX232 chip uh, which is very cheap, um, very simple to use chip and that's going to convert the serial output from Arduino flavour serial to a serial output of RS232. So here's how I've got the components wired together. I've got my Arduino Nano down here and my VFD display up here and in between them this is the uh, converter which is going to take the serial output from the Arduino which is 0 to 5 volts and it's going to convert it into that RS232 minus 15 to plus 15 volts here. Now the only other sort of complicated bit is as I mentioned the input for the display has an RJ45 connector like an Ethernet wire Whereas the output from my converter, well, that has a, a DB9 serial uh, connector like this. So I've just got a little bit of extra wiring in between them here. And all this is doing is literally uh, connecting those two different sorts of connector types together. Um, so the, the pinout of the RJ45 here, well, this was what I showed you in the technical document that came from the Epson display here. So we've got three ground pins, pins 1, 6 and 8, those are wired together and they also go to the uh, negative of the 12 volt supply and to the ground pin on the uh, RS232 pin out here. We've also got uh, pin 7, that's the positive voltage supply which is going to my 12 volt connection and then we're just using a single data line which is uh, on pin 3, that's the receive line. Um, because the display, we're not going to be sending any data back from the display to the Arduino, we're only going to be sending data in one direction. Uh, so we only need to use the, the receive pin here. I'm not going to bother wiring the transmit pin as well. I'm not even sure what data a uh, display could transmit, but obviously serial communication can be used for all sorts of devices. So, um, you know, if this was a, a different sort of device, you might want to use that. And then those uh, wires... Um, go to the uh, connector here so this is going to mate with the converter 
and the pinout for an RS232 connector here, well, here we've got a ground is on pin 5, which is at the end here, and then we've got the uh, receive pin, which is pin 2. Now, it's easy to get muddled up when you uh, connect serial ports to each other, so normally you have the transmit of one device going to the receive of another, and then the other way around as well. Here, I'm connecting the receive on this pin here to the receive here as well because these aren't actually different devices all I'm doing here is literally um, you know changing the connector type really what we have here is we've got the receive pin here going to the transmit pin uh, from the Arduino that's where the, um, the sort of the conversion between devices is occurring but on this side all I'm doing is just uh, changing the connector so yeah don't don't get uh, modeled up there um and then on the arduino side well i mean if you're using software emulation in theory you can send uh, serial data from any gpio pin of the arduino but i'm using a particular library called altsoft serial and that always uses uh, pin 9 to transmit serial data so i've got uh, pin 9 here connected to the transmit on uh, this side of the board in theory, if I wanted to be able to receive data from this RS232 as well, I could connect pin 8 to the uh, receive line. But like I mentioned, I'm not expecting any data to be sent back from the display, so I'm not bothering to connect that. And here's the Arduino code. So um, I've put a ton of comments at the top, and I've just put some links to where I found the, uh, the files and some of the relevant pinouts there because I find that quite useful to be able to refer to in my code just to make sure I haven't done anything daft. Um, I, including the Altsoft serial library, like I mentioned, you can download that from here and it will enable you to uh, emulate another serial connection on a pair of GPIO pins on the Arduino. Now, Arduino Unos and Nanos only have one hardware serial interface uh, that's on pin 0 and 1 and generally speaking that uh, interface is already being used when you do things like serial.print or if you send any messages from the serial monitor that uh, serial interface is, is already being uh, kind of consumed by your connection to the PC so in this case we want another serial connection to go from the Arduino to this to the display and for that, that's what we're going to use this alt soft serial uh, to create a secondary software emulated serial connection. And like I mentioned, that uses uh, pins 9 and 8. In fact, we're only going to be uh, transmitting data, so pin 9 is in and we'll connect. Um, now, the next bit here, in addition to simply sending characters and numbers to display on the screen there's a couple of kind of special commands that we can do as well uh, these were listed in the technical documentation again and it's part of an epsom format called escpos um, so i've actually written the command set there but you can see there's some special commands here that uh, clears the screen for example uh, it clears just uh, the line that the cursor is on so the cursor is the point at which the uh, the display is going to print any text that is sent to it. Uh, you can see there's some other things here. There is a self-test mode which you can activate as well. There's even a mode that will uh, automatically display the time. Um, so I've just included some of those uh, special functions there. Um, but then we get to the setup. So I'm initializing the serial connection. So this is the hardware serial connection to the PC. That's what we're going to use to communicate from the Arduino to the PC and back again. Um, and then, having set the pins here, we then uh, begin the software serial connection. So this is the one that's going to be converted into an RS-232 signal to go to the uh, display. And when we start up, I just call a couple of those special functions which I defined above. So we initialize and clear the screen and we move the cursor to the home position so we start writing on the first character of the first line and this is how I wrote the text which you saw in the video at the beginning so we simply call the write function of the software serial connection that we uh, created at the beginning uh, this will write on the first line because I called cursor home first 
Then I'm going to call set cursor 1, 2, so that's going to move to the first character on the second line down, and then we're going to write this uh, text on the second line. Um, so it's really simple, like I say, you can just call the write command just as if you were sending any other kind of serial data, and that max232 clip in between, that's going to handle all of the conversion uh, and the inversion as well, so uh, swapping the zeros and ones and setting the correct voltage to send to the display. And then in the loop function, um, all I'm doing here is just going over and over, and if any data has been sent from the PC, so remember that serial is the hardware interface to the PC, so if we've typed anything in the uh, top of the serial monitor window, as I did earlier for example, we'll read that data. If it's one of these special characters, so if it's a, a new line or a carriage return, what we'll do is the, move the cursor to the home position. If it's any other character at all though, so if it's a, a letter or a number or you know a dollar sign or an exclamation mark, whatever you want, what we'll do is we'll simply write it to our software serial connection. So just the way as we wrote some um, you know, predefined strings up here, what we'll do here is write whatever value we read from the uh, hardware serial connection. And that's really all there is to it.